Hey everyone, it's Noel Christopher with Renner's Warehouse, Senior Vice President of Corporate Development. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the housing market, um, something I've been talking about quite a bit, and then that there's a lot of hype uh, out there in the media. Uh, this is something that I don't think there is a lot of hype about. Uh, there's a recent re report out, which I really like their uh, economic reports, is RaymondJames.com. I'll post a link here. Uh, Scott Brown, their chief economist, uh, he just put out uh, something today that talks a lot about uh, the economy and things that are happening on the world economy and pressures and, and things that could affect what we have going on. Um, and, you know, you can disagree or agree with some of it or not. I haven't really studied through the whole thing. But one point that was noteworthy was uh, talking about the housing market and how affordability and how appreciation can actually affect affordability. Interest rates went up at the end of the year. That started to have a lot of people to pull back. Interest rates have gone back down. They're thinking the Fed's probably not going to raise interest rates too much this year. They're probably going to stay neutral. Um, but what isn't recovering and what isn't coming back are is affordable homes. And that's something that I've talked about for a long time. I posted back probably about a year ago on this um, on LinkedIn. And, you know, affordability is something that, that you know, the, because of the cost of materials, the cost of construction, the cost of just doing business in most cities, um, is getting sometimes outrageous. I mean, look at Chicago. You've got high taxes. You've got a high barrier of entry. Uh, you've got uh, the, the values are, are high compared to other areas, even though Chicago hasn't even begun to recover in some of the submarkets from the recession, really, truly. And so uh, it's causing a lot of people angst that they can't afford to buy a house. And uh, I, I hear it. I, it makes a ton of sense. But then on the, on the other side of that, you get guys like Gary Vanderchuk saying, well, why buy a house? Why not rent or why not, um, you know, take the money? It's, it's not saying don't invest, which is a big difference because a lot of people jump on the, well, it, you know, when you, when you own a house, you're creating equity and you're creating long-term wealth. Yes, over a very, very long term. And if you can't afford to buy a house, so then what's the solution? Maybe the solution is is to rent and then invest into single family rentals, or invest into an investment property, or invest into a fund. Um, the guys like Fundrise, you can you can put money into a fund and they go out and invest into single family houses. Uh, so it's there's there's uh, there's options, and so a lot of people who can't afford to buy a house make a good income. And it's not the fact that they can't afford to buy a house. They can't afford to buy the house that they expect to want to live in in the neighborhood they want to live in. So maybe they should go invest into a single family rental into a different market that's more affordable. They live in the West Coast. Maybe they should be inv investing into the Midwest. They live in Chicago. Maybe you should be investing into St. Louis or Columbus, Ohio or Charlotte or Memphis or, or, or anywhere in Florida. Any of these markets that maybe is a little bit more affordable. Uh, and the barrier of entry is, is lower to get into a house. So that's something I want everybody to think about. Um, just because you can't buy a house to live in doesn't mean you can't buy, invest into a house and start creating wealth to be able to own the house that you want to live in. That's the key. That's all I have to say. Thanks.